Hello guys, in this tutorial we are going to see the simulation process about incremental sheet forming process. So we are going to use Abacus software to make the simulation. As we know the incremental sheet forming process takes so much time in terms of computational time. So in order to make the problem in a simple way, I took very small geometry which has a dimension of 50 millimeter into 50 millimeter and the forming tool about uh, 2 mm radius so that we can make a uh, simulation process within a small amount of computational time and I can show you the results at the end of the tutorial. So for that purpose I just limited the scale and then I made the simple cone geometry and for this I just make a depth of this cone shape around 10 millimeter so that the forming time will be very small and then it can take only small computational time. So let's see how we can make a tool path and how we can make a simulation. As we know the incremental sheet forming process is based on the localized material deformation which means as you can see here there is a sheet attached to the fixture and based on the forming tool movement at each step uh, due to the local material deformation the final geometry can be formed. So in order to make that particular shape we have to design the tool path where the tool can follow that particular tool path and it can form the final geometry which we try to make. So in our case we are going to make a cone geometry. So now we are going to make a tool path for the cone geometry so that we can make a proper simulation which we aim to form as a cone shape. So let's see how we can uh, do that one. So for that let's open the fusion software. So we just open the CAD geometry here. You can use any CAD software to design your cone geometry. So in my case I used SOLIDWORKS and I imported the step file into the Fusion software. So now we got the geometry. Now let's make the tool path. So for that go here and choose the manufacture option. And from here uh, you can create a tool path. So let's do step by step option and you can follow that one. So for that first choose setup. Choose new setup and you can define the stock. From stock only we are going to cut and make the cone geometry. So we don't need any offset. So just click 0 0 then we get a perfect uh, stock for the our CAD geometry. So here I'm going to use the spiral tool path because our uh, geometry is a cone shape. So let's do this one. And first we have to define the forming tool. As I said before, our forming tool is like, uh, has a two millimeter radius, which is four diameter. So I just deleted the tool and then I'm going to make one for you. So just to click the ball in mill and then click OK. So from here you can define the dimension. So let's follow the step. So diameter is 4 and then length you can define whatever you want and then go to the cutting data and then you can define what is the spindle speed and what is the feed rate. So I'm going to here give 2000. I want to make a little bit faster. So I'm just going to give 2000 and then click accept. So now we design the forming tool. Just click OK. So we made a farming tool. Now let's do other things. So here you can select where you want to make a, a farming process. So you can just select here. You want to make from here. So just click this region. And then you can also choose avoid this and this place to make more accuracy. But that is not important here because this simulation process just to show you how you can do the incremental sheet farming process. So I'm just skipping these steps. Like you can do from your experience, like whether you want to avoid or you can just keep. Then go here and then I choose around 50. But this is based on the outer limit. And then I'm going to give like a 0.25 step size. And then I'm going to give one way and I'm going to choose up milling. And then here you can see inside out and outside in. So I'm going to give like outside to in and click OK. It's just we can check whether uh, the you know the forming process happening properly and you can see yes it's going from outer to inner but the problem here also it's forming so you can avoid that one so further just to go here you can play with this outer limit one more time and you can check whether still it's going yes still it's going then you can go here and then you can make avoid the surface and then click OK. Yeah, see now it makes. But uh, in my case, I think we should not do this one. 
so remove this one and then go here click this one around 30 and then do ok so here you can see tool inside and tool center and the tool outside so let's make tool inside and we can do yeah so this one works much better This one is not that much important because in this uh, region the tool is just going to move like a flat which means there will be no deformation in the Z direction. So but sometimes this tool movement can cause some surface roughness on your forming sheet. So better you can delete this data or you can limit uh, this area like you know if you go here you can adjust so many options like what kind of offset you can do for example if you do like this it can little bit adjust like this you can see previously we saw the forming you know height until here but when you are increasing the offset it will cause much more reduction in the uh, forming tool path so if you give like a 2 you can see some other difference like this see now it's much reduced now let's go one more time and you can do around 3 maybe yeah let's try 3 yes it looks much better and it looks much closer to the tool boundary so this kind of conditions if you do you can much much reduce the farming tool movement closer to the uh, the target boundary which means we are planning to make a geometry from here so in this case you can do like this but if you are like a uh, much experience with your you know like uh, cnc tool design or any cnc design software you can do a lot of things by deleting even this data and you can start from somewhere here but uh, from my experience this kind of movement is better because the tool take a little bit time from the outside movement then slowly move into the uh, forming region because sometimes making a movement 0.25 millimeter suddenly into the center that sudden uh, deformation can cause some fracture in the sheet if your sheet thickness is very small like a 0.5 or 0.3 or even sometimes one millimeter because as i said before the deformation is based on the local material deformation so suddenly when the farming tool causes 0.25 millimeter at one place it causes like a punch movement so it's like you are punching the sheet suddenly from the top so suddenly there is some opportunity or there is some chances that it will make a fracture on the sheet so better careful about that one so now everything is done then go here you can see post process so here you can see this is the xyz option and you can choose your you know the number of your uh, name i mean this thousand one means your file name and you can give whatever you want to give but i am going to give like a thousand five just to click ok and then we made a uh, file so you have to understand one more thing we are going to make a simulation right so we need this document in terms of position coordinates but as you can see here you can see only x and y and starting what is at zero which means you have to make x y z coordinates so in this uh, spiral tool path you cannot easily separate the x y z so for that what you can do you can use uh, the g code ripper there is one free uh, software which is available uh, on the internet i will show you how you can download so if you type g code ripper in the google you can see this link and then if you click here you can download this software for your windows so just go here download and you can download for the windows as well as for the python files i just downloaded here and then i will show you how you can use that software as you can see here i downloaded the gcode ripper software and then i just extracted here now let's open that software so you can see the interface from the gcode ripper and go to the file and open your gcode file as i said before this was my saved nc file i just opened that one so we have to do small changes before we save the file because we made this geometry in the millimeter so you have to go to the settings and change that option to millimeter and then click recalculate so recalculation is done we are going to export this file as a csv just click ok and then go here you can see csv file and then export file and just here in your working folder so everything is done now go and see 
so now you can see so now you can see that we got the xyz coordinates so now we are ready to do uh, the simulation process even you can plot and see what kind of geometry you got as i said before we got the circular gone geometry and you can see this one through the plotting so this kind of graphs can explain you like what we are going to make in the simulation so now everything is set and let's make the uh, position file for the abacus software so as you can see here there is a three xy coordinates we got from the fusion software then based on the three points we can calculate what is the total distance between those three points so this is the normal equation you can see like uh, what is the distance between three points and you can simply do the calculation and you can calculate the time between two points like from one point to another point and uh, what is the time difference to reach that particular point and that one you can calculate based on the farming tool velocity which you can calculate based on the feed rate here the feed rate is 2000 so you can convert that one which is like a millimeter per minute into millimeter per second just by dividing 60 and you can calculate the velocity so based on the velocity you can calculate the time by dividing the total distance and then you can calculate the total time based on the time difference between this point to this point just to put a zero and then calculate the uh, time uh, difference then you just repeat the calculation then you can get the total time to complete the whole simulation so here it took like around 135 seconds to complete the complete calculation which is almost like two minutes so now we are ready with the time versus uh, X, Y, Z coordinates. So now we are ready to make a simulation. And one more thing, what we need is a material property. So that one also I prepared for the aluminium material. Here I am going to use the aluminium material property. And you can see what is the density and what is the elasticity based on the abacus unit. And here I just chose like a ton millimeter second newton uh, megapascal. So based on this particular unit system, I just converted the density into ton per millimeter cube and then the Young's modulus in terms of megapascal and I just calculated the plastic curve and then based on the Holomon law which we did before and then you can get the stress strain curve for the uh, material plasticity. So now everything is ready. Let's go and do the simulation process. So now let's start making the simulation. So for that we have to make uh, parts for defining the sheet material and farming tool. So first step just to do the sheet material. So name that one sheet and then choose 3D and a deformable and shell with the planner option. Click OK. So as I said before our dimension is 50 comma 50. So you can choose by defining the two array like a corner. So minus 25 to 25. And then finally here around this is 30 yes so now we got the proper sheet dimension click OK now we have to define the surface because we have to define the thickness so click create and then and then select this one brown and OK then we have to mesh the geometry click this option and then define the global thickness which is one millimeter then apply then click this one then the mesh is done then make a farming tool so this one is going to be farming tool so this is going to be rigid body and we are going to make a tool as a circular so just select revolved cell option and then click ok then our farming tool dimension is around 2 millimeter radius so click dimension option here and define the tool dimension which is 2 millimeter and then click ok so we got the forming tool now we have to define the reference point in order to define the tool motion so select 0 comma 0 because that is the tool center click ok and this is the reference point now do the similar thing to define the sets and then click OK. You have to choose the reference point and then done. And then make a surface to define the contact. Then click OK and choose the brown. 
and then now it's done now go and then define the material so go here and create material so i'm going to name that one as a sheet material material yes and then give density i already have the data which i arranged properly so i'm just going to copy paste So we define the sheet material. Now we have to define what is the sheet thickness for that go here and then make a section. So our geometry is going to be shell. So click shell and the homogeneous and then click OK. Then give the sheet thickness which is 1 millimeter. I assume my sheet thickness is 1 millimeter. But based on your problem you can define the thickness whatever you want to be. So click OK and then assign that one into the sheet material so go here section assignments create and then select then click ok then it's from the top surface then click ok so now everything is done with respect to the section arrangement as well as the material now let's go and do the assembly so we are just going to select these two and click ok so we assign that one now we want to make a proper alignment by moving the tool so you can see here this is the view you can see but you can see the sheet and forming tool is merges so we have to move the forming tool so click that one okay so we are going to move from uh, the center point then it's already 0 comma 0 so click enter one more time so now you have to define the up movement so here you have to define the set movement because our forming tool diameter is 4 millimeter so now define to so it can move up so you can see here now the sheet and farming tool uh, sits together properly without any merging so now uh, this assumption is ready like not assumption the assembly is ready so now you can see here the assembly is ready so now you can see here uh, we properly placed the farming tool and sheet material so now you can define the field output and uh, you can do that one after defining the steps so go to the step and define your initial steps so now we are going to define a step so create that one we are going to use dynamic explicit select that one and just mention your total time you can get it from the the farming tool design like we did the toolpath design right so in the time calculation you can get what is your total time from the toolpath design curve and then you can define the mass scaling to speed up your simulation process so here i'm just going to use 0 0.001 you can change based on your simulation issue and then click ok so now you can define your field output so now you just click it and you can see it already chose but you can remove the unwanted one just like that because it will take so much time to write and we don't need those kind of values so you can remove that one and also you can add the thickness which is very important for the incremental sheet farming so for that you just go here and select the section thickness and click ok and the next one history so now you can define the history output and then you can choose the contact surface and then you can choose sheet surface and you can select what is the contact force you need due to the contact pressure and click ok so now everything is done let's go to the interaction property to define the contact so here we are going to give a contact condition just select ok and then here from the mechanical you can click the tangential you can give penalty you can give like around 0 0.05 like very small uh, you know fraction coefficient 
So here this friction value is based on your problem because we are actually use so much lubricant when we are doing the incremental sheet forming process. So 0 0.05 value is like somehow good one. Then for the normal behavior use the hard contact. Then it's okay. Click and then go to the interaction and create. We are going to use general contact. Just to click that one and then we can do select surface points. Go here. And the first one is sheet and then farming tool click and then ok it will ask what is your property then choose this one and click ok so now everything is done we have to give a boundary condition so now let's go to the boundary conditions and fix the sheet so for that we are going to use symmetry anti-symmetry this one and then select ok and you have to select the edges because we are going to fix the edge use the control or shift to you know also select the all the edges i use to shift and select four edges and then click ok so now we have to fix all the edges without any displacement or rotation movement so choose this option and click ok so now the sheet is fixed and then we have to define the tool movement for that we have to define the position of x and y and z so click x and then choose smooth step and then give ok so in the smooth step option you have to define the tool movement in the x direction for that go here and then copy and then do one more time for y smooth step and then click ok then go here go up and copy the y and come here and then paste it okay now we defined x and y we have to define is set also so is set the same procedure now everything is prepared we have to assign these things to the farming tool so for that again go to the boundary conditions and create one more to define the x movement which is displacement and rotation click that one and then choose the this one the set number two and then okay we are going to define x1 so it is going to be x okay then do the same thing create displacement and then reference point it's going to be this one and then y okay then do the same thing for the e set okay and then one use the e set coordinate then finally the farming tool is not rotating so we have to constrain all the rotation movement again click this one done and then you just go here zero zero then okay so now the all the boundary condition is done so before that we have to go to the file and then save the file otherwise it will be a problem so isf just clicking one okay and then go to the job so now everything is done but you have to understand the one more thing uh, we fixed the farming tool in the center but sometimes uh, this cause some problem while we are running the simulation because the tool sometimes misinterpret the x y z toolpath movement so before that what you have to do go here and notice what is your initial tool position so at zero time the x is this one and y is this one so better we fix the farming tool based on the, this dimension so for that just to go one more time to the assembly and then move the tool so choose the tool and then click ok so we are going to move from the initial point enter and then we know what is the dimension here so copy and then control so 1.109 and then go one more time 18615 so 18615 comma 0 and then enter so this is the tool position 
click ok so now the tool will be stayed at time 0 and then start to move from here so in this way there will be no problem in the simulation just to go to job and then submit the job so for that create this one and I am just going to name ISF1 tutorial or you can give any name tutorial and then ok and then we are going to use a double analysis and then for parallelization I am going to use three processor click ok and then submit no monitor so based on your computer configuration it will take little bit time because the mass scaling was very small but even I can little bit uh, you know increase or reduce but it will show you the wrong results so I just stick to the very small mass scaling value but let's see if there is a one step coming without any issues then the simulation running properly because I already finished the simulation I can show you the final results I just want to show you the simulation which we prepared doesn't have any error because if there is some error then the simulation don't run so that is what I want to show you before I show you the final results so just wait and see how it works yeah now you can see the simulation started to work so we did a proper assignment like uh, the farming tool movement and the boundary conditions and everything so let it run and before that let me show you the simulation which I did using the exact settings and then you can see the results and this one also I will show you after a farming few steps and you can see a little bit the tool movement let's go and see the completed uh, simulations so this is the farmed uh, simulation like or you can see this is the successfully submitted uh, simulation you can also see like in the assembly like how the initial tool movement is fixed like what I showed before so this kind of uh, you know the position is very important in order to get a proper results so let's go to job and again see the results so here you can see the tool movement so let's go to the first step yeah now you can see how the tool rotates and how at each step the material deforms locally and finally we get the cone shape so also you can see like uh, in this case I have some problem with my mouse so the mesh size is little bit higher that is why you can see like a much expansion in the um, like a mesh because as you know the incremental sheet farming process is based on the local deformation and all the edges are fixed so that is why the sheet stretched and formed so when the sheet stretches towards the farming depth it always causes the thinning that you can clearly see in the sheet thickness changes so you can see this is the one millimeter and in the in the farming depth here which is unformed region this two red color that has a one millimeter but in other cases you can see there is a thickness changes so this happens because of the bending and stretching towards the farming depth so when you want to see the thickness changes along this uh, farming direction you want to increase the mesh size but I want I don't want to make like a very small meshes because it will take so much computational time but when you are doing for your own uh, simulation you can increase the mesh size and you can make much much smaller uh, mesh elements in the farming region so that you can see like uh, how the thickness changes accurately happens in the uh, farming direction and along the wall which we can say like a cone wall or the wall region you can clearly see so this kind of you know things you can see when you are uh, making abacus of abacus simulation so you can see like see how what is the farming height uh, we got it is around like 10 as I said before the farming depth is 10 millimeters so you can see it's like 9.9 .9, so which is almost uh, 10 a millimeter so this kind of you know validation you can do with respect to the simulation and you can compare these results with respect to the experiment and you can write a paper or you can make a research proposal and those kind of things you can do and this one is like a simple cone shape and I also made some tutorial for the 
pyramid shape and that one i will show you in the next uh, tutorial so thank you for watching and we will see in the next tutorial and uh, let's go and check the simulation which is running so you can see here it's still running and uh, there is no problem uh, in the simulation so you can see here there is a movement in the tool so there is no problem in the movement of the tool see you can see it's followed to uh, form the cone geometry so the simulation which we made in the tutorial also the one i did with the exact boundary condition everything looks same and uh, the results will be like uh, good as we expect you can see here go to one and then go to the stress and you can see it's almost similar so you can compare those things yeah 1.63 and this one is like 1.62 so as you can see here the tutorial which we prepared today is successfully solved because i took some time to edit the video so during that time the problem solved and it's completed without any error so now let's go and check the results as you can see here we got a proper uh, results as what i did before so now the simulation was successful so you can follow the exact step what i did here and you will also get the exact results and there will be no problem so if you have any questions or any doubts regarding the simulation just to post it and then i can explain so i why i uh, put this video at the end because i don't want to make a confusion like okay i did a uh, two-step solving and then i just said it will solve i wanted to show that it's 100 percent completed and the result is exactly good and you can also compare the timestamp and all the things and it works really well so thank you so much for watching just follow the tutorial and do your own exercise and if you have any problem just contact me again or just post your comment i will answer it and thank you so much see you in the next video have a nice day